You ever get confused by exclusive licenses? Like, it, it just kind of seems like nobody knows really what are the details of it, you know, what is an exclusive license. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about uh, the different kinds of exclusive licenses because yes, there are actually, in my opinion, three different kinds of exclusive licenses that I've seen. And I want, by the end of this video, for you to have some clarity as to if you wanna buy or sell exclusively or if you'd rather do the lease or licenses. Uh, so first, uh, I'm gonna give a general overview. So th there are three types, in my opinion. There's the exclusive beats, there's the true exclusive license, which for me is like the industry norm. And then there's like the 100% exclusive work for hire type thing, right? Which basically means that you're giving up 100% of your rights. Like if, if that thing blows up, great for the artist. That's good. That's good for you if you get that deal. But if you give up your rights like that, uh, you may end up regretting it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each one. So first... You may not even know what exclusive beats are. So exclusive beats can be a play on words. So there's something I want you to keep in mind that you can use, but if you're an artist, you kind of want to watch out for that uh, because there are benefits to it, but then there are also downfalls. So let me tell you a quick story. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who Anno Domini is, but I was actually going through, I think it was on, on Instagram, and I, and I think I got an, an ad from him, something about an exclusive offer. And I was like, wow, this is interesting. Exclusive beats being, being advertised to the public. And it, and it caught my mind is like, he's not using exclusive in the same, it's kind of like a play on words. Exclusive doesn't necessar necessarily mean exclusive license. It could just mean it's an exclusive offer, right? Because people use that in other areas of business, right? So think about it. They can be like, oh, this is an exclusive offer for this flashlight. It's like, well, a million people are getting it, but it's, it's, it's just an exclusive offer. Uh, so what that means, it could kind of mean whatever you want it to mean. Exclusive how? Like... So I saw that and I was like, wow, this guy's creating an exclusive offer that's going out to multiple people, but really it's just exclusive to that deal. And I was inspired by that and I actually tried it on my own recently and I created a 2020 offer uh, with 20 exclusives. But the exclusives aren't, you are the only one having it, which that's what you would expect. You would expect if you sell or buy an exclusive, it would just be to one person. But the way that I used it was, okay, these 20 beats are exclusive to this offer. These beats will never be posted again. They're never gonna be on my Instagram. Uh, and if you get these beats, then you're gonna have limited access to them. It's kind of like limited or private access to beats, right? So that's something that you can do is you can use that word exclusive to create a little bit of urgency, right? Oh, I'm giving you 20 exclusive beats for such a low price. And a lot of people are kind of going to get tricked up by it, but really it just, the, the word exclusive has so much value already. And if you look at it in the context of the music industry, it has that much more value. So why wouldn't you create an offer with some exclusives, right? Just make sure that you're clear upon what it is. And if you're going to offer exclusive to a group of people through an external source, such as ClickFunnels, like I did, or Anno Domini does, um, then I would just recommend to, uh, I would recommend to make, oh yeah, to make sure that it's, it's clear for the, for the artist that whoever, whoever's getting it, that they, they have a potential to actually get a refund. See, that's, that's, that's something, I don't want you to scam people into this and be like, oh, this is it, and then trick them and then try to, this isn't no scam stuff. This is just a way of selling. And it's a way of, it's true, like, I, I offered those beats and they were only available for a limited time. They're, they were never posted on my YouTube. They were never posted on my Instagram. So it's great value for an artist as well because instead of 100,000 people seeing it or a million people seeing it, it's only going to be available to a small group of people that probably are never going to run into each other. But it, essentially, the first type of exclusive, what I'm talking about, is basically just a limited or private access, unlimited license. Now let's get to the next exclusive, the true exclusive lease. This is what, in my opinion, is the industry standard from what I've heard, what I've seen. Uh, it's basically the standard contract, what comes on BeatStars. So if you, if you think about BeatStars, the standard contract, to my knowledge, uh, if, if you want to sell an exclusive, I may be wrong, but to my knowledge, it's 50-50 on the publishing share. So you are actually, as a producer, giving up some of the publishing share but you're not supposed to be giving up all of it, right? That that's, gets to the next one, 100% work for hire, which is 
Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But this type of license, the, or this type of exclusive license, the benefit to it is that the artist pays a little bit more um, to get true exclusive access, which means that the beat is, in this case, removed from the website. Uh, it can be negotiated to be removed from YouTube and, and such. Uh, the content ID on it is not um, assumed to be given to the person who buys it. That has to be, in some sense, negotiated or s spoke about. Um, because from my knowledge, even if you look at the resources from CD Baby and other stuff like that, um, it's, it's not guaranteed that as the exclusive owner that you own the content ID. That's something that you want to talk to about the producer if, if you're going to um, buy it or if you're a producer. Uh, that's something that you want to keep in mind when dealing with the artist that uh, if, if that's a big video that you have on YouTube and it's collecting a lot of royalties, collecting a lot of ad revenue, then you may not want to give up your content ID. But honestly, if it's doing that well, you probably don't want to sell it uh, exclusively in this way either because it's going to be removed from the BeatStore instantly. So if you're on BeatStars and you sell the exclusive, it's just instantly removed. So nobody, like as soon as they buy it, you don't actually have to remove it. That's the cool thing about BeatStars. It does it automatically. And these are more expensive, right? These can be, I've seen people go down to like 100, but you know, honestly, standard is like 500 to in the thousands for these because it's just, it's a more serious project for a, a more serious artist, right? Um, after I explain the next one, I'm, then I'm, I'm gonna tell you how you can tell, right? So if, if you're a producer, which one should you choose? And if you're an artist, how do you tell what the license is? And honestly, you should be able to see in the agreement, but that may not always be as clear as you may hope. So I'm gonna tell you how you can really find out. Uh, then, for the last kind of exclusive, there is the 100% exclusive work for hire. You're giving up all your rights. The artist is getting all of your rights. If the artist blows up, then you are basically left with nothing. Uh, the crazy thing about this one is, is, is some people are confused by it. Some people think that this is the industry standard, but really it's not, right? So uh, from what I've found over my time and years as a producer is that that's what I thought. I used to think that this type of exclusive was common. If people are going to pay that much, then they should get all the rights to it. I've always, I've always believed in giving back to the artist a lot, but it's crazy because if you think about this type of license, a lot of people see it as controversial. A lot of people, and what I've heard is that these kind of contracts may not hold up in court as well. Uh, just because it's it's kind of questionable uh, if somebody was the initial writer of the beat should you be able to buy them out that's the question right this is an art form and, and for me i'm kind of on both sides of this issue uh, so i guess my insight in in this is if you're going to sell a hundred percent exclusive work for hire i wouldn't make that deal with somebody that really has the potential to likely blow up and leave you in the dirt. Like, if, if you think that that's the plan, I would try to negotiate something else. But if you're just like a, a starting off producer and somebody just wants to have all the rights, just because it sometimes can also keep it more simple for them, that they don't have to try to involve you, they don't have to worry about how to get you the royalties, when maybe they're gonna be posting on a different performance rights organization, you know, they could be on ASCAP, you could be on BMI, which I've had issues collecting between the two. Uh, so if you know any ways uh, to collect royalties better, feel free to post in the comments. Uh, but then there's also other issues of like a distributor. Then if I'm on DistroKid, how do I, you know, I have to try to get you credit. But then if you're not on DistroKid, you have to sign up. So it creates this whole havoc uh, in trying to get credit. So some artists just actually want to keep it simple and keep all of the royalties to themselves, which... Again, if you're just a starting out producer selling to an artist that's, you know, they're working their way up, that actually kind of can be a cool idea. Just keep in mind that if it really escalates to a high level, I would do a little bit more research as to how strong of a license and how, how much this, this can work because... This is something that I've actually thought about doing and I want to get more producers to work with me. I know that there are talented producers out there and I'm actually looking for partners, but that's something that I'm looking into is I'm trying to create my own 
work for higher contracts. So people could work for me and give up their rights to write any beats in return for my help, uh, payment, initial payment. Uh, literally, they're just essentially working for me. So keep that in mind. Like this 100% exclusive, it, it's quote unquote work for hire, which basically means that you're an employee. There, if if you're being bought out of an exclusive from somebody 100% like this, 100% publishing, you're giving it all up, then you're essentially their employee on this project working as they hired you on this project. And they're giving you a one-time payment uh, to keep all the rights. So I hope that I've brought some clarity as to the industry standard exclusive license, uh, the 100% exclusive work for hire license, which a lot of people think is industry standard, but it's kind of controversial, something you wanna watch out for. And this new thing that I just found out about not too long ago and I just started trying as well, which is exclusive beats, which is really just a play on words. It's an exclusive offer where those beats are part of that offer and it's limited time, um, however you wanna phrase it. But be careful with that because uh, obviously if, if you can't claim it's exclusive to the offer and it's, and it's not, then you, know, that's, you, you don't wanna be a liar to your reputation is very important to your brand as a producer and I don't want you guys to sacrifice that. Now, as an artist, how do you tell? And as a producer, which should you sell? Uh, so first let me go into, we're just about to end this video. I just wanna end up on these last two points and then, uh, then we'll end it from there. So if you're an artist, just keep in mind, if it's an advertisement to a bunch of people like a Facebook ad and it's this thing like 20 exclusive beats, keep in mind, it's probably just a really strong sales pitch. Um, and it may be true, it may be complete exclusive. Um, I, you know, it's possible that somebody would, it just doesn't make sense for somebody to create an advertisement and send it out to a lot of people to, to sell an exclusive bundle for cheap. I mean, it better be really expensive and, you, and it better be clear on their site that these exclusives are only going to one person. If not, if it's an advertisement, if it's going out to an email list, if, if you're getting an email that just seems like it wasn't personally written, it's probably an exclusive offer where those beats are exclusive to that deal. If you're just buying it off a beat store and, and, and you're going to somebody's website and it's an individual beat and it's priced higher, and if that's the situation, I would assume that it's probably going to be a true exclusive license, which you might want to um, either accept or you might want to negotiate on the content ID if you want to actually get your song onto a uh, sound recognition service, uh, such as YouTube Content ID or others. I'm not sure if Shazam uh, relates with that. That's something I'm learning about. So if you know about that, uh, can you Shazam, get your song on Shazam as an artist leasing a beat? That's something that I'm looking into. So if you know the answer to that, please post below. Um, and then how do you tell if this is a 100% exclusive work for hire? Uh, that's something you got to negotiate and, and I recommend if you're an artist that you try to put it to the producer in a way that that makes them feel good about it because as a producer it's kind of hard honestly to when people ask me I sometimes just ignore those messages you know they're like oh I want to buy 100% exclusive rights you know this and that 100% um, of publishing and I'm unless it's like not that popular of a B or you know maybe they're just starting out I, I usually don't like that because I, I just feel like I put so much into it and then just to give it up and and then whatever they do with it, I, I'm left in the dirt essentially. So um, that's that's my thoughts on it. Now, if you're a producer and you're trying to determine which one to sell, honestly, I prefer leases, but if you're going to sell exclusive, I think that the it, you, you might want to mess around with trying an exclusive offer. I think that it's kind of, it's not, I don't want to say tricking the artist, but it's just a new thing and it has so much value to the term exclusive in the music industry. And just be clear and be upfront. But keep in mind that the only way you can really do these kind of sales is through like your own website. I haven't, haven't found a way that you can do exclusive offers through like a beat store. You kind of need to be like on ClickFunnels or something. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to get a 14 day free trial. This is what uh, Legion Beats and Anno Domini have used to become the first two producers to make a million dollars. I think they're doing like a million per year now. They're they're really going crazy with it. Uh, there's another video that I posted. I'll probably post it uh, like up here in a bit uh, so you can check it out and see what I'm working on. 
And then, uh, yeah, just keep in mind, if you're going to give up your rights, just make sure that it's something that you want to do. And if you're ready to sell, if you're ready to buy, then let's do business. This is the music industry. Let's make it happen. Have a nice day, guys.